What about this, uh, uh, what you told me before about the, the ranging, uh, are you, do you still have any, some doubts about that or uh, is everything resolved now? Uh, we're getting good ranging data now, Gary. Сейчас мы получаем хорошие данные по измерению дальности. Super, Tom. Houston flight, Zug Moskva. Корабль Союз готов к стыковке. Sure, the flight director and the other people here in the control center are happy to know that. Uh, I'd like you to know that uh, Apollo is go for dock also. And if you'll excuse me just for a minute, I'll pass that word on now. Here, Roger. Apollo Houston, I got two messages for you. Moscow is go for docking. Houston is go for docking. It's up to you guys. Have fun. All righty, sounds good. Apollo Vino, Mila, Alexei. Mid July 1975, an American Apollo spacecraft and a Soviet Soyuz spacecraft prepare to join in Earth orbit. 140 miles above the Atlantic near Portugal. During their two-day joint flight, astronauts and cosmonauts transferred between spacecraft. They conducted space experiments, and they tested a compatible rendezvous and docking system, evaluating its potential as the universal standard on future spacecraft for docking and rescue. The mission climaxed more than three years of planning and preparation a time during which differences in language, in technology, in political creed were set aside in favor of the common goal. This was the mission that opened the door to international manned spaceflight, the mission that set the course for joint flights of the future. This was the mission of Apollo Soyuz. <laughs> In the pre-dawn calm of July 15, the methodical countdown of Apollo moved with customary precision toward a mid-afternoon launch. Of lesser note was the fact that this would be the last flight of Apollo Saturn. And as the countdown narrowed, chances are that more than one member of the launch team reflected on other proud days of Apollo, like its nine flights to the moon six of which resulted in landing men there. It's three flights to Skylab, transporting crews to the orbiting space station. And now, in nine days, the entire Apollo program would pass into history. Apollo would make way for a two-way reusable vehicle, the space shuttle, scheduled for its orbital flight debut in 1979. But today, it is Apollo Soyuz, and as dawn approaches the Florida coast, a similar drama is nearing climax, half a world away. The scene, Baikonur Launch Complex in Kazakhstan, Central USSR. The Soyuz spacecraft, its crew approaching the end of pre-launch checks, is about to signal the start of this historic mission. At Mission Control Moscow, flight controllers monitor Soyuz as it gathers momentum en route to orbital altitude. Less than nine minutes after launch, Soyuz, powered by triple booster stages, is inserted into its assigned orbit. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. The countdown has proceeded smoothly uh, this morning, and the uh, flight crew here at the Kennedy Space Center were alerted about 10.30. 
there right now in the suit room at the Manned Spacecraft Operations Building, uh, donning their spacesuits, and they're scheduled to leave the suit room about 1237 for the trip out to Pad B. The weatherman continues to be cooperative. A near-perfect day for the launch. Made to order for the thousands lining the roadsides and beaches to witness this Apollo Saturn finale. seconds in the countdown. We'll hold down till thrust builds up. 11. Engine 10, ready light on. 9, 10, 9, 8, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 2, Engine sequence start. Zero. 1, 0. Launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, Roger, power clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust on all engines. You're right on the money. Apollo is placed in orbit. Go. And before the flight is three hours old, the docking module is smoothly extracted from the second stage booster, left trailing behind. During the next 40 hours, Apollo, through a series of maneuvers, will slowly close the orbital gap with Soyuz. The two crews will meet again, not as members of this or that nationality, but as friends who for three years shared their separate cultures and customs, and a part of themselves. In preparing for their mission, Soviet and American crews spent a good deal of time together. In formal mission training, in learning about the other man's culture, in getting to know the man himself. In the United States, I want to visit Hollywood. Alexei Leono, Soyuz commander. Because I want to be a movie star. Colonel in the Soviet Air Force. No, I don't want. <laughs> Tom Stafford want. In 1965, on the flight of Voskhod II, he became the first man to walk in space. Right now, we're, we're, we're optimistic we'll meet the launch schedule. The hardware's in good shape, as far as astronaut and cosmonaut training are in good shape. But when you put the whole thing together... The that's Apollo Commander, problem. Air Force General Thomas Stafford. Before this mission, he had flown three times in space. He was commander of Apollo 10, the mission that orbited the moon and qualified the lunar module for subsequent lunar landing. A civilian and a veteran of the U.S. space program, Donald K. Deke Slayton. One of the original seven astronauts, he was scheduled to pilot the fourth manned Mercury flight. A slight heart irregularity interrupted his flight career. He was returned to full flight status in 1972 and assigned to Apollo Soyuz as docking module pilot. Another civilian crew member, Valery Kubasov, age 40, the Soyuz flight engineer. On Soyuz 6, he successfully performed the first welding experiment in the zero gravity of space. Rounding out the American crew, Vance Brand, civilian, aeronautical engineer, former test pilot. He's been a backup crewman on previous flights, but this was his first trip into space. 
He is the command module pilot. As this was a time of mission preparation, it also brought together engineering and technical specialists from both sides. Heading up the teams were Dr. Glenn Lunny, the American project director, and his Soviet counterpart, Professor Konstantin Vushuya. Under the direction of these two, an atmosphere of cordiality and mutual respect developed that pervaded the many months of meetings and negotiations. Joint groups were assigned to five general areas. Communications and transit, life support and crew transfer, mission planning, control and guidance, and mechanical design. This latter category included the building of the first universal docking system. The system's development, its ultimate testing in space, constituted a specific goal of the Soviet-American Space Agreement signed in Moscow in 1972 by the chief executives of both nations. Although each nation designed and built its own half of the docking system, the interface, that is the physical mating of the two, was a single design. Considering the language barrier, the differing technologies, two diverse political systems, the development program moved with relative ease. There were differences to be sure, but none that was above negotiation and compromise. Perhaps Professor Bushuyev put those differences in the proper light. He said, in our joint work, there has been only one contradiction. Dr. Lunny drinks black coffee, and I drink mine with cream. OK, copy. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the uh, TPI maneuver was indeed successful. Tom Stafford reported from Apollo that he was station keeping with Soyuz. Both control centers, Moscow and Houston, have given a go for docking. Soyuz, Apollo, Cox, Apollo, Houston. Apollo, Houston. Can you see the Soyuz? Okay, he's in behind the docking margin. Uh -huh. Here he comes. Uh, just above the docking module. Looks real pretty. Good job. Let's stay there. Look at that. I am approaching Soyuz. Oh, please don't forget about your engine. <laughs> Less than five meters distance. Three meters drop. Three meters. One meter. Uh, uh, yeah. Contact. Capture. capture. We also have capture. Roger, Tom. We'll pass it on. Soyuz and Apollo are shaking hands now. Houston, Apollo. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, and go great to Professor Bushuyev. You got to my No, Professor Bushuyev. It was a soft docking. Around the world, millions watch and listen as the two spacecraft become one. Now they wait for the next dramatic event, the meeting of Soviet and American crews. All right, on a show. Hawk Revive, you look free. Okay, the camera. Ah! Ah, just a chance. Got it? Okay, it will stay open. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. Lexi. Mr. Uh, well, if you turn on the camera, hit the remote. Okay. Here. Glad uh, to see you. Uh, Here. Passage uh, the legacy. 